you are going to learn how 3D structure drawings and specifically the upstand beam, downstand beam and slab beam in this particular video. Let's first clearly understand what these beams mean. This is a downstand beam. It's situated underneath the slab so its section will look like letter T. This is an upstand beam. It's situated on top of the slab so its cross section will look like an inverted T or an upside down T. This is the slab beam. It's situated within the slab so its depth is equal to the slab depth. Let's say this beam continues up to here with no projection up and no projection down but it's of exact depth as the slab then it's called a slab beam. Beams transfer both dead load and live load from the slab to the columns. Dead load means the weight of the building itself whereas live load means the loading imposed on the building by the people and other objects such as beds, chairs among others. Loading is transferred from the slab to the beams and then from the beams to the columns, from the columns to the bases here, then from the bases to the soil or rock. For example, when someone is walking around here on the slab, Loading is transferred from the slab to the beams and then from the beams to the foundation. Let's take an example of the second floor structure layout which shows us the position of the beams. Along here, this is beam 305 of 250 by 300 mm thickness at 6.4 meters top beam level. This is beam 306 of size 200 by 400 also at 6.4 meters top beam level which means that all these beams with mark 6.4 meters top beam level are at the same level. Top beam level is the level as seen from the top of the beam whereas bottom beam level is as seen from the bottom. This is beam 303, this is beam 308 among others. Each beam has its detail in the section here. For example, this is beam 302 on the top view. It starts from this grid line 1C to grid line 1F. Similarly on the section, this is grid line 1C to grid line 1F. The drawing also details that this slab level is at 6.4 meters top slab level or the upper face of the slab. Then when this 6.2 meters is written like here, it means that the bottom slab level is at 6.2 meters or the lower face of the slab like this one. This symbol means that we are casting a 200 mm thick class 25 solid slab around this portion here from beam 306 to beam 307, same for here and here. This is a lift shaft wall. We do its formwork and cast its concrete here. We are going to talk about the lift shaft wall later in another video. These are staircases. Similarly, we do formwork and cast concrete for the staircases here. This is the part for the showers and when we are on the upper floors, we have to leave this portion untampered with. We mark with a piece of chalk on the formwork like this and then put some kind of formwork like this. When casting concrete, we ignore this part. These are steel plates here. This is also a steel plate. This one also. This one also among others. They are always welded onto the steel for the beams and then casted together with the beam while the plate remains exposed on top. They look like this. Their purpose is to receive steel sections from above. Steel columns or RHS columns are always welded onto these steel plates and then the steel plates transfer the loading from the beams from the beams to the columns and then from the columns to the foundation. When we take a look at this first floor structure layout, it has this upstand beam 101 of size 200 by 400 with steel plates welded directly in the beam. So a steel plate will be welded directly here. This is also another one here. This is also another one here among others following these measurements here. For example, these two are 2.4 meters apart. Always paint these steel plates with gloss paint before welding them onto the steel in the beams to avoid corrosion. This is the bridge that connects this building and this one here. People move from inside here to this part of the building via this bridge here. This is building A and this is building B joined together by this bridge. And that's how we exactly did it on ground. This is building A and this is building B joined together by this bridge. This 11 means the section. This is its section here. It details that this beam is from grid line C up to grid line D. Basically, this beam has three rows of bars, two top bars, two middle bars and two bottom bars. These are two top bars, two middle bars and two bottom bars. Beam 302 is of depth 400 millimeters, same as as it is here physically, and 200 millimeters here, same as as it is here. 
two H20 Quad 12 steel bars. These are the ones here. Two means the number of steel bars required, then 20 means the bar thickness. Therefore, our bars are of 20 millimeters bar thickness. Then this Quad 12 helps us to understand or know where our steel bars start and end from. Then these are two H20 Quad 13 steel bars which overlap with these ones of Quad 12 up to this extreme end. So this is the overlap here. The overlap means that if one steel bar is coming from this side and ends here, another one will start from here and continues to this side. So this distance between in here is what we call the overlap. For these mid-row bars, we have two H12 Quad 10 steel bars. These are the two H12 bars, this one and this one, they come like this and stop here. Then these ones of code 11 come like this up this extreme end. Then for bottom bars, I mean these ones here. This one and this one, we have two H20 steel bars with code 8, they start from here up to here. Then these ones of code 9 start from here up to this extreme end. I used this particular example to explain this to avoid overlapping within the middle of the column, so it is recommended to extend the overlap up to this side here. The drawing also details that from grid line 1E to grid line 1F we shall have 31 H8 links code 14 with 150mm spacing center to center, therefore from here up to here is 150mm same as from here up to here and many more. Short beams, for example, this one 305B starting from grid line 1A2, the beam is 250mm by 300mm and this is its section, 250mm along here and 300mm depth or thickness. It details that we shall have 4H16 code 35 for both top and bottom and 2H12 mid bars with 22H8 links running along here with a spacing of 150mm. This is beam 213 of dimensions 200 by 400 millimeters. This is column C1 here and this is column C1F. Physically, this is column C1 and this is column C1F. From here up to here is the landing, same as from here up to here. These are two H16 code 99 for two top bars and two bottom bars. These are two top bars here and these are two bottom bars here. The code just helps us to know where our steel bars start and end from. 2 is the number of steel bars required and 16 is the bar thickness. Therefore, our steel bars are of thickness 16 mm. Also here, these are two H12 steel bars, code 100 and 18 H8, code 101, 150 mm link spacing. Therefore, these links are at a spacing of 150 mm center to center from here up to here. That's the end of this video about how to read the structured drawings for the beams. I hope you get something from it. Watch this next video about how to read the structured drawings for the slab.